tobacco road today. But a hundred years ago, when the first Lesters came to Georgia, it was different. <laughs> it run 15 miles down the ridge to the Savannah River, through the richest cotton tobacco plantations in the whole South, past fine big homes that the Lesters themselves built and lived in. <laughs> and that was a hundred years ago. Come a time then when the land fell fallow, and worse and worse. But you think the lessons would leave it? No, sir. They stayed on and on. But all that they had, and all that they were, that's all gone with the wind and the dust. And this, this is Tobacco Road today. <laughs> How come? Can't complain, Jeter. Ah, that's good. Hey, is it is it true when I when I hear that Bessie's back? Yes, sir. Last week, buried her husband down in Statesboro. Wasn't hardly cold before she picked up and hiked home. Oh, ain't that good? Say, is she is she still full of the spirits? Jeter, it's worse and more of it. I do declare it looks like my poor head's gonna split wide open with all this singing and yelling and hallelujahing. Brighten the corner where you are. Brighten the corner where you are. Someone far from harbor, you can guide across the bar. Brighten the corner where you are. Brighten the corner where you are. Brighten the corner where you are. Someone Woo! far from harbor. She sure got a powerful voice. <laughs> it been quiet since she got back. Yeah. Well, so long, Henry. You know you got a blow out there? <laughs> I can get home as long as I got one good one. I'm gonna trade this darn curry in next year. But so long, Henry! Supper ready? Supper? Huh? What about that wood? Well, there it is. Can't you see it? How come I can still see it? How come you didn't sell it? Hey, can't sell no wood if nobody wants to buy no wood, can you? You're the craziest old fool I guess I ever did see. That's the fourth time you've taken that same load of wood to town and brought it back. Ain't even had it out of the car. Well, I ain't going to take it out of the car. Turnips right now. If it is, love sure will give his wife's poor old ma some of them turnips. <laughs> if you mean some, well, love and we, we, we certainly take a, a whole heap of each other. <laughs> come on, come on, get back. Pretend like, you, pretend like you didn't see him. Come on, let's get back. Get back, my Time. 
Hey, you know, you must be plumb wore out toting whatever it is you, you got in that old cloak of sack. I ain't tired. How's Pearl, love? Is she all right? That's what I come for. I want to talk to Jeter about Pearl. Yeah. What's she done now? She been, she been treating you mean again? Jeter, you gotta say something to Pearl. I'm getting darn sick of the way she's acting. Oh, are you treating her right? Well, what's that gotta do with it? She's married to me, ain't she? Well, what's she done now? Well, one thing, she won't talk to me. Well, what do you want her to say to you? Anything. I don't care what. She could ask me, is my back tired when I come home from the cold shoot, couldn't she? Do I think it's going to rain? Or when is I going to get my hair cut? There's a lot of things she could ask me. She won't say one darn word. Well, maybe you don't go about it right. Well, I tried every way I know how. I kicked her and I poured water on her and I chunked rocks and sticks at her. And all she does is bawl a lot when she's hurt. You can't call that talking. Well, her not talking ain't, ain't anything to get mad about. Why, well, Ada here never never spoke a word to me for the first ten years we were married. And <laughs> yeah, them were the happiest ten years of my life. She runs away, too. I'm getting sick and tired of the whole business. Give her time, boy. She, she'll be all right. She ain't but 13, remember? You listen to me, love, Benzie. If you don't like what she's doing, you just bring her back home and get yourself another wife. You can have Ellie May. Oh, every time I say anything, you all want me to marry Ellie May. Well, it ain't no use. That's all there is to it. I want a young wife. I ain't gonna take no 23-year-old woman for a wife. Have everybody laughing at me. Hey, love. Yo, Ellie May. It's Pearl I'm talking about. Love, will you, will you tell me what it is you've got in that, that cloak of sack? I've been looking at it ever since you come here, and Lord knows I'm just dying to know. Turnips by cracking. Turnips. I ain't, I ain't had me a good turnip since, since a year ago last spring, and oh, the good Lord only knows how bad I wanted one. You know, I could, I could eat me that whole cloak of sack full of I could eat me... A whole wagon load full of turnips between between now and sundown. You don't need to look for me to give you none, because I ain't. Oh, that's a, that's a whopping mean thing to say to her poor old pa. Ain't you going to give me just a bite, love? No. I'll tell you what I'll do, love. I'll, I'll make you trade for some of them my turnips. I ain't trading turnips with nobody. I'll tell you what, if you'll give me some of them turnips, I'll, I'll go down to your house the, the first thing in the morning and I'll... I'll tell Pearl she's got to behave herself. I'll tell her that that, that ain't no way to, to treat a man who's gone to the bother of marrying her. And I'll tell her she's got to stop hiding in them bushes and ask if it's going to rain. And oh, you're going to get your hair cut. <laughs> what do you say, Lil? I don't got to pay you for that. I already give you some quilts and two quarts of cylinder oil and seven dollars to marry Pearl. And that's enough. You got to make her behave for nothing. Just one little bitty bite, love. Ain't no use you niggling at me. Love. Please, love. And all my children all the time blaming me because the uh, oh good Lord made me poverty stricken. And them and them all all the time boring me out because they they ain't got nothing to eat, is it? As if I had anything to do with it. It's, sometimes it looks to me and... It, it looks to me like the good Lord's got it in good and plenty for a poor man, but... But I ain't complaining. No, sir, I ain't complaining. Oh! 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 Hit him in the head. Hey, give me some of that turnip, yo! 
wish I'd known what kind of family I ran into, I wouldn't have done it. Don't hold no hard feeling again, me. Yes, we'll gather at the river, the beautiful river. What do we sing? It's the old time religion. That's good enough for me. <laughs> it's the old time religion. It's the old time religion. It's the old time religion. It's good enough for me. Makes me love everybody. Makes me love everybody. Makes me love everybody. It's good enough for me. It'll take us all to heaven. <laughs> that is all right. You know, I, I feel better already. Cheetah Lester. You've seen Who, me? Yes, sir. This morning when I was laying in bed thinking, a voice come to me and said, Sister Bessie, get up and go down to Jeter Lester. He's at it again. You, you, you sure you ain't got me mixed up with somebody else? The voice said it was you. Well, I ain't done nothing, Sister Bessie. Not one little sin? Well, not one big sin. Maybe a little sin in general, but nothing you could call a, a real sin. How come the voice said it was you? Oh, and that's easy. The Lord knows what a powerful sinner I was. I guess I was about the most sinnerless man in the whole world. Nothing lately? No, no, nothing lately, Sister Betty. Well, I'm mighty glad to hear that, Jeter. Because yeah. I'm out this morning to run all the sin off the back of the road, and I got a good start. Yeah. How's your folks? Oh, they're all right. They just uh, they ain't up yet. They're a little small and just a little tired. Well, just tell him I said hey -o. I sure will, sister. Shall we, we gather at the river, the beautiful, the beautiful river? Shall we? Cheater. What are you doing hiding here? I'm here, about run into her. Well, is, is, is it nice here? Cheater. <laughs> Captain John's coming back. Captain John's dead. Well, it's your son, Captain Tim. It's all the same. He's coming back to the back of road. He's going to give us farmer's credit again? That's what everybody says. Hey there! Hey there! Praise the Lord! Captain John's coming back! Well, I thought Captain John was dead. He is! And some seed cotton and some. You know what I'm going to. Who put this old plow down in the dirt? You did seven years ago. First thing I'm going to do is to is to burn off all this old broom sedge and, and fill my fields in. Do this. See if you can find some harness. There used to be a piece of bridle hanging in the kitchen. Oh, I think Grandma had it. Yes, sir. It looks to me like duty me we we's going to raise us about a, a bale of naked, cause. But the way I feel now, 80, is just like I used to feel every spring. When you can smell the smoke from the burning sedge and the wind blowing from the fresh proud ground, it just gets down into your, into your soul and you just feel like you, just feel like you got a plant or a bust. What ails you now? Spring come and gone already? There ain't no use starting today. Look. What? I don't see nothing. Well, ain't no use to start the fire if a rain's gonna come up and put the fire out, is there? You ain't gonna have no crop no how, Jeter Lester. Not if Mr. Tim was to come and give you a mule and some seed cotton, some guana, and the sun would shine day and night. You still ain't gonna have no crop this year. Yeah, what are you talking about? You ain't gonna have no crop because you got a sin on your soul. You stole them turnips from love, and it's the wrong time of the year for stealing. Love is my son-in-law. You, 
You can't steal from your son-in-law because he's, he's killed folks. And right on top of that, you got to go and tell Sister Bessie, a religious woman, that you didn't steal no turnips. And I didn't either. Lord, don't hold with anybody that steals around planting time. And he sure don't hold with anybody that steals and then lies and says he didn't. You wait. You'll see. Well, I ain't scared. You just wait. Well, I ain't, I ain't scared no little old turnips is going to scare me. No, sir, no. No use getting scared of turnip. <laughs> Little old turnip. <laughs> who, who ever heard tell of such a fuss over a few little old turnips? Morning, Henry. Hello, Jeter. Is Sister Bessie at home? Sister Bessie? In the sweet by and by, we will meet on the... Well, hallelujah, Brother Jeter. Hallelujah, well, Sister Bessie. Well, Sister, ain't I certainly am glad to see you looking so fine. Jeter's got something to tell you. Yes, yeah, Sister Bessie. Yeah. I done made me a great big mistake yesterday, but it clean slipped my mind at the time, but the old Nick got the upper hand of me, and I, well, I done taken some turnips from Love Benzie. He stole them turnips. Yes, Sister Bessie, I stole them, and I'm sure needing prayer about as bad as any man you've ever seen. I, I just got to clear my soul so nothing won't stand between me and a crop of cotton. Gina, where are them turnips now? Well, to tell you the truth, Sister Bessie, we, we had them. Oh, well, all, all, all except in this one. Why, well, well, that's a summer turnip. <laughs> Where not did Love Benzie get summer turnips this time of the year? That ain't no summer turnip. That's a winter turnip. You know, as far as I went down and told that's him... That's a I, summer I, turnip. Are hey, you sure? Let me taste it. It tastes like it, all right. Let me taste it. <laughs> tastes like a summer turnip to me. <laughs> That's a summer turnip, all right. Well, I'd go down there now if I was afraid he wouldn't he wouldn't beat me with a stick. All right, now. Get down. Get down on your knees. Oh, Lord. Jeter Lester's at it again. He stole all of Love Benzie's turnips, and now he's at them all up. It's too late to do anything about that now. But it do seem to me like I never did see such a stealing man in all my born days. Amen! Now, Lord, you got to make him quit right now for good and all. Amen. Does that clear me? It will, if what? you don't do it no more. Anybody else? Well, why, why do you add it? You might, you might, you might mention Dude, because he's the most sinnerless one in the family. Dude? Is this Dude? Yeah, come on, yeah, Dude. Sister Bessie's going to pray for you. Well, I do declare if he ain't a grown-up man now. <laughs> why, when I went away... He, he wasn't nothing but a skinny little old boy. Yeah, I guess he must be about 20 now, ain't he, ain't he? Mm -hmm. You know, I, I do wish he had more sense, Lou. Well, I, I guess he's about got his growth, though. Oh, he's pretty, too. Kneel down, dude. I don't want nobody praying for me. Kneel down before I knock you down. You lay a hand on me, you old fool, and I'll toss you over this house. You see, you see, that's what you got to pray for. He, he ain't got no respect for his paw. Oh, Lord, say brother dude from the old Nick and make a place for him in heaven. That's all. Amen. Lord, be prayed. Wait a minute here. That seems to me like a darn short prayer for a sinner like dude. Dude don't need no praying. He's just a boy. He... Hey, you! 
Look at the old scoundrel, still full of beans. How are you, Jeter? Captain Jim, praise the Lord. Captain Jim, praise the Lord. Captain Jim. Captain Jim. You, you look more like your pa every day. Sure, I'm glad to see you, Captain Tim. You remember 80, don't you? Oh, sure. How are you, Miss Lester? And dude? Dude, don't you go there, dude, boy. What about me, Bubba? Who are you going to be? Dude, how would you like to have a horn of your own? Oh, ain't nobody going to give me no automobile horn. Come on, sit down here beside me, and I'll give you a horn of your own. How would you like to have a nice big race? Let go of me! You're a big man! I'll give you a horn! 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 Dude, he, he can sound more like a horn than a, than a horn can. He, he's the last of my boys, dude is, and I sure am proud of him. Well, tell me, Gina, how the crop's coming. No crops, praise the Lord. No crops in the past seven years. Nobody got no money to, to grow any. That's why everybody's so glad to see you come to give them some. What's that? Well, all I need is a mule and some seed cotton and gear. No, wait a minute, Gina. I can't understand how that idea got around, but... I'm sorry, Jeter, but I, I won't be able to help you. Tell you the truth, I'm in pretty much the same fix you are. Well, what do you mean, Captain Jim? You'd better tell him, Payne. Look, you see, uh, Mr. Lester, uh, I'm from the bank in Augusta. We're down here to collect money, not to lend it. You mean I can't have me no credit to grow me no crop this year? I'm afraid not. Why, I just got to have credit, because me and my folks, we're starving here on Tobacco Road. Miss Lester, have you ever thought about getting away from here? And what was in them darn mills? Well, but if you're starving. That ain't got nothing to do with it. Why, Captain John told me I could stay on my place as long as I wanted to. He said he couldn't give me any more credit in the stores up at Fuller, but I could I could live here till I died. You know that, Captain Tim. Yeah, I know he did, Jeter, but you see that. That land doesn't belong to us anymore. The bank's taken it over. There's nothing I can do about it. Well, I, I can't understand that. Well, this, this was my daddy's place before me and his daddy's place before him. And Lord knows how many lessons before that were. There wasn't, there wasn't nothing here before they come. Well, they. They built this road hauling tobacco kegs 15 miles down the ridge to the river. And now I don't own it. You don't own it. And the darn banks own it. And they never had nothing to do with it. We don't want to be hard on you, old farmers, Mr. Lester. But we're going to put this entire section under scientific cultivation. And there just wouldn't be any place for you. Well, if you're going to grow crops on it, why can't I grow crops on it? Just the same as I did for Captain John. Uh, I'm afraid that's impossible. Please don't let them take me away, Captain Tim. I'm liable, liable to go for long, and if they, if they send me away, I'm, I'm liable to go long for my time. Please don't let them take me away, will you? Captain Tim, Now, what about it, Payne? Couldn't you do something for this man? I don't know. How we could, Mr. Harmon, if he could pay a little rent. Rent? <laughs> I can't even get enough money to buy anything to eat with. Well, what about your children, Jeter? Haven't you got one that could help you a little bit? Why, well, we, we must have had a, how many, Eddie? Oh, about 17, 18 head. Well, one of them was the powder to blow them up. How much rent would it be, Payne? Hundred dollars for the year. Hundred dollars. When you have to have it. Well, come back down here next Sunday afternoon. Well, I guess that's all I can do, Jeter. Not very much. Maybe you can dig it up before Sunday from one of your children or somewhere. Oh, Jeter. Here's a dozen new corn I was taking home. You can use it. 
Goodbye, Dieter. Goodbye, Chef and Tim. Sometime Sunday afternoon, after dinner. Sometime Sunday. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Things have taken a turn for the better already. If you and me get home and eat some of this corn for Dude and Nellie may know anything about it. and we think he is? Hallelujah, Brother Gina. Hallelujah, Sister Bessie. Hallelujah, Sister Ada. Hallelujah, Sister Bessie. Mr. Bessie, how, how come you tell dude that you, you're going to buy him a brand new automobile with a great big horn on it? Well, dude and me's going to need it to drive around and do our preaching with. Ain't you got that much money? I ain't only got that much money from my dead husband's insurance, but I got a little bit more besides. Ain't it? Sister Bessie's got herself a whole mess of money. Come on, let's go get that automobile. Oh, dude boy, you was as pretty as you can be. Hey, wait a minute. How, how come dude got to go with you to get that automobile? How come I don't go instead of dude? Well, dude don't know nothing about no automobile except my horn. Didn't he tell you? Tell me what? Us is going to get married to each other. Come on, come on. Us ain't got no time to lose. Bessie, is you going out of your mind? Brother Cheetah? Tonight, the voice come to me again, and it said, marry yourself to a new husband, Sister Bessie, because it ain't good for a lady like you not to be married to a good man that you could turn into a preacher and who could help you spread the good word most everywhere. And it looks to me like dude. Well, you ain't got sense enough to be a preacher, but he wouldn't know what to talk about when it come time to get up to preach. You leave that to me. Well, what do you think about it, son? I don't care about it one way or the other. And we come on, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Dude, boy, gonna be a preacher. I wonder, wonder how much, how much money Sister Bessie's got. <laughs> no, I wonder if she'd lend me about a, about a, a hundred dollars to. So I wouldn't have to move. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, I wonder if she, if she wouldn't, huh? How I'd go about getting it away from her. Mm. Remind me tomorrow to. Uh, Think about that idea, will you? I want to get leave to marry dude. Fill that in. Will you do it for me? I can't write words. Can you sign your name? Well, I can touch the pen. What is your name? Sister Bessie Rice. Who are you going to marry, Sister Rice? That's him. That kid? You ain't going to marry him, are you? Well, that boy ain't hardly grown. He's willing. How old are you? Oh, I don't have to tell that, do I? That's the law. I can't give you a license if you won't state your age. Well, I was 38 not so long back. How long back? Well, I'm 39 now, but I don't show it. Look here, son. Now, what do you mean you coming here to marry a woman that old? It. You want to marry a girl your own age. Now, you try and talk him out of it, and I'll start a service right here now. I don't know, Sister Bessie, that she sweet-talked me into it. 
How's that boy going to support you? The Lord will provide. I'm afraid that ain't going to be soon, because he ain't going to get married through this office. Now, don't you try and stop us. What are you fixing to do? And you too, ma'am. Now, look here, Sister Bessie. Sow it in the morning. All right now, dude boy. Sowing in the morning, sowing seeds of kindness, sowing in the noontide and the dew waiting for the harvest at the time of reaping. We shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves. Shall we gather at the river? Yes, we'll gather at the river, the beautiful, the beautiful river. Yes, we'll gather at the river, the beautiful river among. Yes, we'll
we got that old thing out of there? I can't get this new automobile through if you don't get that old one out of there. Yo, oh, you can, dude, boy. Shove it. Just shove it out of your way. Yeah. I told you to do it, dude, boy. Oh, I hate that you pretty automobile. I know you can do it, dude, boy. I knew you could do it. This ain't the prettiest thing i ever seen in all my life. Yes, sir, this is sure a fine automobile. Take your hands off there, you old fool! Yes, sir! Ooh! Yeah, yeah, there it is. Yeah, give it, give it. Let, let me fix that for you, dude boy. Uh, you, uh, you got it all upside down and, and every which way. But say, that don't, that don't hurt the running of it, none, does it? No, it runs like it was brand new yet, and the horn wasn't hurt none at all. Sounds just as pretty as it did this morning. Say, this is a great day for tobacco rolls. Let's see, is, is you... Is, uh, is you and dude going to get married clear all the way, or just by leaving the county? We is married already. Hey, you touch my car, woman, and I'll flip you with a stick! Dude, you sure is a lucky boy. Brand new automobile to run around in and mad all at the same time and on the same day. Ain't many a man lucky enough to get a wife like Sister Bessie as pretty as she is at, at her age. Why, oh, yes, sir. She knows she'd make it she'd make a great wife for any man. I don't care where you'd find him. <laughs> Shut your mouth, brother Gina. <laughs> you know, anyway, Sister Bessie, just like she's just like one of the family. Yeah, just just the same as if she was born in it. Yeah. Why, well, everything, everything we got is is half hers. And everything she's got is is half ours. Yeah. She just, just you know, just like blood relation. Oh, that's powerful nice of you, Brother Jeter. You know, that's it. And hey, hey, me's mighty, mighty proud of you and dude and, and that automobile. Huh? I'm just wondering how much how much it cost you. Well, I paid eight hundred dollars cash for that car, and look at it already. Eight hundred dollars. You know, eighty, eight hundred dollars to a lot of poor folks would be a whole heap of money. Not the sister Bessie after the money she got from her dead husband and insurance wise. <laughs> it's just, just chicken feed. You know, if I was to ask eight hundred dollars, that's all it was. What did you say? I said, that's all the money there was in the insurance. Of course, maybe I got 75 cents left over, but that's all the big money there was. You, you mean to tell me you ain't got no hundred dollars to lend me to keep me from being put off of this ground? Ain't nobody gonna give you no money, old fool. If Bessie had another hundred dollars, she'd give it to me, wouldn't you, Sister Bessie? But I ain't got no more hundred dollars. But I was counting on We ain't gonna get it, so you may as well go on and shut up about it. Oh, no, do it, boy. Then why don't you shut up about it? He wants a hundred dollars if you got it. If you got a hundred dollars, you'll give it to your husband, wouldn't you? Come on, let's ride somewhere. You yeah, but dude, boy, you don't understand. You, you're gonna put me over here. Who cares? You're so old, no account, you're gonna die soon anyhow. Dude, boy. If you don't die, they're gonna take and put you on a poor farm. If you was a natural son, you wouldn't be saying things like that to your own folks. You wouldn't be making things worse than they are. Oh, shut up. Sometimes I feel like if it just had me a stylish dress to be buried in, I'd be ready to find me a nice place to lay myself down in and die. Get out of the way! You ain't never gonna get yourself no new dress. I've been promising you that all your life, but you're gonna die and be buried in just what you got on. Don't you say that to you, Paul. Who's gonna stop me? She's gonna die and be buried in that same... Don't you say she's gonna be you got a nerve to put your hands on me!
sit there on that cold ground all night? Yeah, it looks like my lawyer sends me about every misery he could think of just to try my soul. Hey, you know, he, he must be going to do something powerful big for me or he, he wouldn't test me so hard. Well, hope he can see his way clear to doing it for Sunday. Yeah, you know, I bet if, if Tom was here, he'd help us. Tom was just about the best of all the children, I reckon. Yeah, Lizzie and Clarabelle, they were the best of the... Well, yeah, Tom, Tom was, uh, he, he was about the best of the boys. <laughs> His pearl was about the prettiest with all that long yellow hair. Yeah, Tom, he was he was even good to me. I used to hope some of them would write to me. But I'd give up looking for any of them to come back to see me, but I did think maybe Elizabeth anyway would write. Ooh, maybe they did, huh? You know. Didn't you never ask at the post office? Well, what was the use? I couldn't read what they said anyway. I must have a whole lot of grandchildren somewhere. Bound to have with all them boys and girls off from home. Everybody says I have, anyhow. Sure don't know how other people know more about such things than I do. Looks to me like I ought to be the one that knows the most about my children. Yeah, it looks like... All we know is, is Dude and Pearl and Ellie May. <laughs> and five buried out there in the field. You know, I'll... I'll bet if Tom knowed the fix we was in, he'd give us some money. Well, it ain't no use wondering about it. You can't get to him in time. Sunday ain't but two days off. If the Lord's figuring on doing anything for us, he sure had better hurry up or else it's going to be too late. Now, look, Lord, this time I ain't fooling. I'm in a powerful bad fix. You know, they're, they're figuring on taking Nady and me to the poor farm. <laughs> you know what a powerful sinner I've been. You know, there ain't been no bigger sinner than me between here and Savannah. And, you know, there's nobody been any sorrier for their sins than I have once they was done. But what I'm here to tell you is that you better watch out pretty close for me the next couple of days, because I want to do what I got to do without committing any real big sin, because I, I, I know how you I know how you feel about stealing. You know, I like I like Sister Bessie about as well as the next one, and I wouldn't give her a new automobile a thought. But I'm here to tell you. Now, Lord, you, you better step in and Help me out pretty quick, or I'm afraid I'll have to take matters in my own hand. Amen. Sister Bessie! Where you are. 
Sister Bessie, you sure a fine-looking woman. <laughs> yeah. Oh, where, where's dude? He'll be back in a minute. How you feeling, Gita? Well, I... I sure spent me... spent me a heartbroken night. You know, Gita, I feel just about as sorry for what dude done as anything I ever seen in my life. Well, he done near broke my arm. Them yams smell good, don't they, Gita? Yeah. Can I get you a cup of chicory? Chicory? Oh, I wouldn't want to be. I wouldn't want to get put in the arm. Wouldn't want to put in the arm. Oh, you ain't putting me up, none. Yes, yeah. yeah, sit down. <laughs> it's, this is the arm I do all my farming with. You know, I, I do all my my good farming with this arm. And it, it's a sin and a shame the, the way it's going to hold me up. That dude ought to be ashamed of this. Yeah, I, I knew you'd be sorry. If there was only something on earth I could do. Maybe there is, Sister Bessie. Well, what is it? Well, the matter of fact is, I've got a very important matter coming up with Captain Tim tomorrow, and after that I'll be all set for the year. But right now I just need a little change to, to get along on. Yeah? Well, as I was coming up the road there, I seen a, a load of cut wood over in that field. And I said to myself, wouldn't it be a smart idea if I was to haul that wood down to Augusta and sell it? Well, that, that's Henry Peabody's wood, ain't it? But he ain't here. I uh, know, but he don't seem just right. Wait a minute. I ain't stealing it. I'm just speaking on selling it and giving Henry half of that money. Well, you'll be mighty happy to get it without the trouble of holding it down to, down to Augusta. Well, I reckon in that case... It's... No, sir, Bob, I ain't forgot. I'm sanctified. Hallelujah. Yeah. yeah would, you, would you lend me your car? To haul wood in? Well, wait a minute. You know I wouldn't be asking you no favors if it wasn't for my arm and putting it broken. I can't do no farming. Well, I'm just thinking what, what dude would say. Dude? What dude got? You got to tell your husband everything? No, no, no. Well, it's it's, it's well, only... Maybe. Can't tell. I'll be back here by sundown, maybe, with a, with a pretty for you. Well, I guess it's all right, but I reckon you better get going before he gets back. Going? Sister Bessie, I'm gone. Exactly figuring on anybody going with me. I I'd figured on going down there by myself. Ain't nobody in the whole world gonna try this automobile except me. Well, I ain't gonna stay here by myself. That's, That's just the word you see. I ain't never Come broke the little bust. Come on, Gita. We'll just pull us a big City Ordinance number 382. You get out and sell the wood. I'll, I'll be waiting here on the corner somewhere. <laughs> you looking for somebody? Yes, sir. I want, to, I want to see the banker. Susie May, this gentleman wants to see the banker. May I ask your name? Sure. Well, what is it? Gita! Gita Lester from Tobacco Road. Oh, yes. Just a minute, Mr. Lester. Well, uh, what kind of a year are you going to have, Mr. Lester? You ain't going to have no year at all unless you get some money. Will you come in, Mr. Lester? How do you do, Mr. Lester? Come right in. Hey, 
Hey, is, is you the banker? Oh, well, of course. We met the other day with young Tim Harmon. I was hoping you'd drop in. Well, I gotta be going now. What's the matter? Did you come to pay the money? Yo, <laughs> oh, I, I come to borrow it. Well, so long. <laughs> And the idea of what I got, you know, I never spent me all night in a hotel in my life. And the idea was maybe, maybe we could sell something and all three of us stay all night in that hotel. <laughs> Nobody ain't gonna sell my brand new automobile if that's what you're thinking about. Well, everybody ought to spend them one night in their life in a hotel so they have something to go home and tell folks about. What you figure on selling, old man? Come here, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. Look at that! <laughs> See that spare tire? That ain't no good. You can only ride four of them at one time. Hi, mister. Good evening. <laughs> well, we all, we all want to stay all night, all night in your hotel. Okay, sign right here. Uh, you sign. All right, what's your name? Uh, Jeter. Jeter what? Jeter Lester from Tobacco Road. All right, what's his name? Dude's name is Dude. Dude what? Dude Lester. Right. And hers? Her and Miss Dude. Him and me's mad. All right, touch the pen. Now touch the pen. That'll be a dollar and a half. This way, please. <laughs> Andy wishes she could be us so she could stay all night in a hotel. <laughs> hey, shut up, will you? Sure is a fine place. Here we place. are. You know, I never know hotels were such fine places as before. I wish, I wish enough Lindsay could see me now. One of these days, I'm going to spend me the rest of my life in one of these hotels. Hey! That ain't much of a bed for three people. This is theirs. You're sleeping in here. What, what do you mean in that? In the morning. Different rooms for different people. I don't need to say, you know, I bet you, I bet you, Andy won't believe me when I tell her, dear. Well, sorry, the clock is in the look bed. At, look at that electric light. I'm, I'm going to sit me up all night long and, and look at that electric light. Well, 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 good night. Good night. Good night, Jeter.
Morning. Morning, morning. morning Captain. Hey, is, uh, is this the poor farm? That's it. Uh, I thought so. What's that? That's the bath bell. The what? The bath bell. You have to wash up all over. No dinner. Uh, huh? All right, Lord, don't say I didn't tell you. You want to buy a brand new automobile cheap? This one? Yeah, well, it's brand new. It ain't, it ain't hardly broke in yet. Well, what are you breaking it in with, an axe? <laughs> Why, no. That don't hurt it none. It don't hurt the running of it none. Anyway, well, this car's brand new. Cost $800 yesterday. Say, listen, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll sell you this car right now, today, for $100, and, and I'll throw in the wood. $100, huh? Yeah. And $100 I got to have me and today. What's the great right? Well, mister, it only a hundred dollars stands between me and the poor farm. You sure this car's yours? Sure, it's mine. You don't suppose I'd be selling you somebody else's car, do you? Well, I wouldn't know. How's she run? Like a forty dollar mule. Move over. Let me try it. Yes, sir. Come on, Chief. Bob. Chief. Yeah. Uh, uh, police? Yeah. You crazy fool! I don't know! Oh, shut up, Toad, and listen to me. The car's outside. Is it hurt much? It looks like the seaboard airline hit it. But what I ought to do is to lock you all up. For if ever there was a nuisance, it's you tobacco road folks. But you ain't worth the expense to the county. You're just naturally trifling. And I reckon that's all there is to it. Bright in the corner where, where you are. Bright in the corner. Hey, that yowling! You made me late already. And I ain't gonna put off my Sunday dinner any longer messing around in a family squabble. So get out of here, all of you. Get in that car and go on down to the back of the road. And stay there. You mean you ain't gonna put him in a chain gang? If you don't get out of here, I'll put you in it. Well, he stole my own and wrong, and he stole my automobile, he threw me to you! to the poor farm? No, sir. This here machine's mine and Bessie's, and, and you near about ruined it already. Well, that's the way you feel about it. Get out of here! And get it over my land! I ain't gonna be your land long. They're gonna throw you off it. <laughs> <laughs> What are we chucking rocks at him for? He made me mad. Did, did the man come? Not yet. <laughs> couldn't you even get me no snuff? I couldn't get you no nothing.
Ain't nothing much worth taking anyway, I reckon. I'm sorry, Amy. I ain't blaming you. Well, maybe, maybe things will be better over there. Maybe, maybe they'll... They sure couldn't be no worse. Jeter! Oh, Jeter! Jeter, wait a minute! I ain't mad! Jeter, wait! I, I gotta talk to you, Jeter! Wait a minute! Jeter, wait! I, I gotta talk to you, Jeter! Wait a minute! Wait a minute, Jeter! Wait, I ain't mad at you no more! It's about Pearl. She's going off again. <laughs> you ain't gonna hit me in the head with a rock? Don't you understand? Pearl going off to Augusta. What was you doing to her? Ain't I wasn't doing a thing in the world of that girl except tying her up with some rope. And she busted loose from me and I ain't seen her since. Uh, how do you know she ain't out in the woods hiding? I'm telling you she got off to Augusta. Jones Beebody seen her and she told him she's going there. Thank the Lord. Gina, you gotta do something. Ah, that's the way they all went, love. Every darn one of them, Lizzie Bell and Clara. And, well, I can't remember all their darn names. There was... So many of them, but they all done the same darn thing. They up and run off down to, to cotton mills in Augusta so they'd have pretty clothes and, and a hat to wear. Maybe she'd come back by herself. You reckon she will, Cheetah? Well, I wouldn't trust none of them. No, they, they didn't like living on, on Tobacco Road. They didn't like the clothes them all made for them. So they just all up and went and run off. Oh, I sure hate to lose her for some reason or other. She's pretty. I used to love to just sit out on the porch and watch her through the window when she's combing and brushing her pretty yellow hair. You know, I was just thinking, wouldn't it be a good idea for you to have, have Ellie May come down to your house and kind of look after the place and cook for you? I, I don't know of a prettier sight to see than just look into Pearl's pale blue eyes early in the morning. It's awful pretty any time of day, but... I don't reckon I'll ever forget how pretty it is just when the sun's coming up. Mm, well, he may have got to get married somewhere, and if you don't take a fancy to her, I don't know, I don't know where. You reckon if I was to go up to Augusta and find her, she'd let me bring her home? Oh, oh no, what's the use? You'd do the same thing over again. Now, with, with Ellie May, that, that'd be different. Eighty, eighty and me is liable to be going away pretty soon, and there wouldn't be nobody here to look after Lily May. You no, know? you just, you just say the word, and I'll have her, I'll have her wash up and come down. Well, she's mighty old for a wife. Well, you get used to that. What about what all I give you for Pearl? Well, with Lily May, I'll give you the quilts back, and say you can be sure of one thing, she. She won't be running off all the time, no, sir. Well, all right. Tell her to wash her up and come on down. <laughs> uh, go get yourself washed up and go down to his house and fix up for her. Do you want to go? 
Yes, Ma. Where's Mr. Payne? Hi, Mr. Payne. Come on, lady, get him. Get him a drink of water. <laughs> you come for the money. How you got to bust in talking business right away the minute the man comes? Get him a drink of water first. <laughs> Hi, Mr. Payne. I'm sure glad to see you. Make yourself right at home. 80, 80. Get Mr. Payne a glass of water. Come on. Well, I hope you manage to get the money, Mr. Lester. Money. <laughs> money. You know, sir, I ain't, in a, and that's a fact. You know, it looks as though I'm in a whopping bad fixin' and no fooling. You know, Mr. Payne, well, looks like the good Lord don't, don't want us to grow things in the earth anymore. If he did, he'd, he'd be more careful about it. And he'd make the, he'd make the rich people loosen up and lend us farmers some money. Mr. Payne don't care nothing about what you think about that. Mr. Lester, why don't you go on up to Augusta and get work in the mills? In the mills? Well, I wouldn't work in them darn mills. That's a place for women. Oh, wine and string on little spools and things like that. No, sir, not for me. I wouldn't. I wouldn't go up there if they'd give me fifteen dollars a week. No, no, I, I, I just simply couldn't. Well, I just simply couldn't live like that. No. I guess it'll be a whole lot better on the poor farm. Well, that's all right, Eddie. You, you, you go on up there and and look for the rest of the children. I, I wouldn't stop you. I wouldn't do anything to stop you, but not for me. Me, me it's different. I, I couldn't live in the city. City don't like me, and I don't, I don't like the city. I can't live propped up. I've got to be on the ground, and that's that's why I. Like the poor farm. It's on the ground and it's in the country. I better go where you go. Well, I don't know what else there is to say. No, oh, I hate this kind of thing just about as much as anything in the world. But it's not my land and it's not my bank. I just haven't got any choice. Well, <laughs> you can't blame you, you. You just. Morris well, first, you know. Yeah. I'm sorry. Don't mind. Bye. Why? Get there in time for supper. Captain Tim. <laughs> Hi, Captain Tim. Hi, Ada. 
Come on, hop in. Come on, come on, Eddie. Come on, come on, come on. You, you, you're going to get it. You're going to get it right, right after all. <laughs> Which way? Well, it's just taking a walk over to Ludlow. It's such a nice day. To the poor farm? Well, that's about it, Captain Tim. Here, Jeter. Thank you, Captain Tim. Hey, wait a minute. This, this ain't no poor farm. You won't ever see no poor farm. Why, you made a mistake. This is my place, boy. Maybe I did. But I had to do it. Don't mind telling you, Jeter. I couldn't really afford it, but. I had to do it. Well, the man who's done been here and put us off, and if he comes back and finds us still here, he just will send us to the chain gang. Oh, he won't be back, Dieter. I saw him down the road and fixed it so you and Ada can stay here for six months anyway. I like to have made it the whole year, but I just didn't have the money. You mean you you mean you paid him some rent? Yes, I, I gave him $50, Jeter. And here's $10 for you to get yourself some seed and guano. What I'm really doing, I'm staking you for six months to see if you can really grow yourself a crop this time. You think you can do it? Answer the man, can't you? You can do it, Jeter. You did it for my dad, you can do it for me. Good Lord, it certainly looks out after the poor. You keep after him, Ada. He'll do it all right if you keep after him. you mind if he gets me some snuff out of that ten dollars? <laughs> if snuff's going to help you get Zeta to work, Ada, get all you want. about a hundred acres, then I'm going to plow that ground and I'm going to clear it as far as you can see. And look at that sky, Eddie. <laughs> yes, this is just about the best year for, for planting since the Lord knows when. <laughs> yeah, I can just, I can just tell the way it smells that this is, this is going to be a great year for cotton. <laughs> when are you going to do all these big things? Oh, pretty soon. Next week, maybe. With Jude and Ellie May gone, there's nobody left but us. Where's Grandma? Well, 
ain't seen her since yesterday. Well, maybe she's gone up in the woods and, and couldn't get back. <laughs> maybe she even died up there. You never stayed away like that before. Well, I'll go up there one of these days and, and look for her. Yes, it is. I could go to be the best year I ever had. <laughs> 